The Supermarine Attacker flies in War Thunder's British Air Tree. Let's check it out. At the dawn of the jet age, most of the major powers were scrambling to get new jet aircraft off the drawing board and into production. In the UK, there were dozens of proposals, paper projects, and prototypes for everything from new fighters to high-speed research jets. Late in World War II, the Air Ministry put out a specification for a jet fighter with laminar flow wing design. There were a few submissions, but the proposal from Supermarine seemed to have the most promise. It was a low-risk design based on the Supermarine's spiteful propeller-driven fighter, and it was expected that the aircraft would be ready quickly, and indeed, the first prototype flew in 1946. It was rejected by the RAF due to lackluster performance, so Supermarine made a pitch to the Royal Navy. Now, in many ways, the attacker was kind of obsolete as soon as it was introduced. It had a tailwheel configuration, straight wings, and a thick fuselage. But, importantly, the plane worked, which was more than could be said for some of the other early jet designs, and it was pressed into service as the Royal Navy's first carrier-capable jet starting in 1950. The attacker succeeded in delivering a low-risk, conventional aircraft very quickly, but that came at the cost of its performance being outpaced by newer designs almost immediately. The jet was phased out of service with the Royal Navy after only three years, but it ended up flying for Pakistan into the 1960s. What we get in War Thunder is the attacker FB-1. This is the Tech Tree version, not the premium version, but they're very similar, so most of this applies to both. The plane is at rank 5 of the British Air Tree in battle rating 7.0. Now, this is very much an entry level jet fighter with no radar, no ballistics computer, and no guided weapons. Its offensive capabilities are basically the same as some of the prop fighters before it. Mainly, it has four 20mm Hispano cannons and some very basic loadouts for external weapons. It can carry two bombs or 12 rockets. The bombs are mounted pretty far out on the wings and they drop together. So if you fly out with the bombs, you only get one drop. The rockets do good damage if you can hit something with them, but they're highly inaccurate. And without a CCIP or anything, you're relying much more on luck than on skill to actually pop targets with them. Now the cannons are really far out on the wings, so just a quick note, you might want to think about gun convergence with this plane. And if you need a refresher on that, you should search my channel for the quick tutorial on the subject. The flight performance of the attacker is an odd mix of good and bad flight characteristics. It's got a relatively good rate of climb if you speed up first and you don't have any external weapons. And it has competitive top-end speed with other planes at its BR without any external weapons. It has air brakes and useful combat flaps that you can use up to around 500 kilometers an hour. On the other hand, it suffers a lot of the same issues as other entry-level jets. Its acceleration is pretty lackluster, especially at low speeds, and it isn't especially maneuverable in a dogfight. You can usually get one or two good energy turns out of it, but that's really all you're going to get, and after those one or two good turns, you're just hanging in the air with no speed and crap acceleration, which isn't a good position to be in. The dive performance is usually pretty solid, as long as you make careful use of your air brake and you don't push it past about 0.81 Mach. Now in terms of maneuverability, the news isn't great. At this tier, a lot of the other jets you're going to be up against will be a pretty fair fight or superior, but the super props you go up against are a serious threat if you let them get within firing range. Unless you already have speed built up, high-end props can catch you because your acceleration is so bad, 
and basically all of them can outturn the attacker with minimal effort. You can outrun them in a longer chase, but your acceleration just isn't that good. So, as I said, unless you've already got some speed at the start of an engagement, they're gonna get you. Taking the attacker into battle presents some choices and some challenges. In air battles, you can use this as kind of a makeshift tactical bomber and go for a base or something before looking for air combat. The two bombs you get won't do a lot of damage, but it's something. The issue becomes really the limited flexibility since the bombs drop together, which means that you can either drop on, like, one ground target or hit a base, which will usually make the base a better choice for points and your overall contribution to the mission. You might be able to get lucky with the unguided rockets, but really they're just not very effective in air battles. Now using this plane as a fighter, or as an interceptor, kind of forces you into a boom and zoom vulture mission. It's possible to do traditional dogfighting, but it's really difficult and you have to pick your targets very carefully. It isn't interesting to watch, so I don't really have a lot of footage of it in this video, but the most effective tactic seems to be doing a side climb at the start of a match and trying to get up to around 6,000 meters and then looking for enemy interceptors who climbed up to 5,000 meters hunting for bombers. Make sure to carefully manage your throttle and air brake when you go into a dive though, as this plane has a pretty low rip speed. Now flying out for close air support is an option, but with the same caveats as other entry level jets like this. No ballistics computer, no bomb sight, and both bombs drop together, so you get one blind bomb drop, and then it's T-44. Now, in my experience, the unguided rockets are too inaccurate to be of much use, but you might get lucky, or you might just be better with them than I am. I had some fun using this in ground battles, but just keep in mind that with a BR of 7.0 ground lineup, there are prop aircraft far more suited for close air support. And while the attacker is viable, if you take the thousand pound bombs, it won't be ideal, and you can realistically only pop one target per flyout. Visually, I have to admit, I really don't like the look of this jet. The tail section is really odd, with the vertical stabilizer placed well forward of where it ought to be, and that upward forward slant to the tailpipe, combined with the odd bulging fuselage midsection, and the wings being really far forward on the fuselage. Uh, to top it up, no good paint jobs are available, so for my two cents, this is kind of an ugly plane. Now, landing the attacker is a bit weird. You can drop gear and landing flaps a bit over 300 kilometers an hour, but the thing is, this is a tail dragger, which feels really strange in a jet. It's got a pretty wide undercarriage, so there isn't any risk of tipping over or anything if you need to fishtail on the runway, and generally, it handles well on final as long as you don't dump too much speed. After you touch down, there's no brake shoot or anything, so the landing run might end up being pretty long. There is an arrestor hook, though, which you'll almost never get to use, but it's there all the same. Now, the cockpit on the plane is simply excellent. The visual detail is really good, the layout is great, with important instruments easy to find and read, and the external visibility is just outstanding in every direction. Flying the attacker in VR is wonderful. This is a great cockpit. To close out on the Supermarine Attacker FB-1. This plane has hard-hitting cannons, it can carry bombs, and the cockpit internal view is outstanding. However, it's not great in turn fights, its acceleration is really bad, its widely spaced cannons can be tricky to hit with, both of its bombs drop together, and its performance suffers quite a bit when it has an external weapon load. The final verdict on the attacker FB-1 is that this plane is difficult to master, like most of the other entry-level jets, 
and its performance really doesn't give it any singular advantage that it can cling to in combat. In my opinion, this is kind of a struggle boss, and there are other entry-level British jets who can do all of its jobs, but do them better. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.